Hello and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. This is uh, the second in a series of uh, talking about modeling a coffee mug. The method that I'm going to be doing in this tutorial is the polygons. So let's go right to it. So here in uh, Cinema 4D, and the first thing that, that I want to create basically is how it's basically like a shape of what looks something similar to my coffee mug. So for example, I could go ahead and select a cylinder. And by selecting that cylinder, I can make it maybe the size or proportion of that coffee mug. And of course, I'm going to place it here, move it a little up. So it's kind of like sitting on top of the zero position over here but this is not the coffee mug by itself i need to do something uh, more drastic than this so for that i'm gonna go ahead and select let's say a cylinder and look at the display gurat the second option the gurat shading lines and i can see my geometry so if I want a curve on the, on the sides of this uh, coffee mug, this one line, this one polygon from the top to the bottom is not going to help me. I need at least two or three of these segments. So I'm going to go ahead and add the height segments to be three. Okay. Uh, the rotation segments, they are a little too many at this moment. So I'm just going to basically have put that in half. So I have only 18 segments. And of course, the thing on, on the top, that might not be helping me too much. So I'm going to go into the parameters, say caps, and disable the caps. By doing that, then I have kind of like a tube, an empty tube, that I can actually use for modeling. Now, the next thing is to add that curvature. So I'm going to go and into my formers, I can see that I have something called bulge. The bulge is going to work not only towards the inside, but also bulging to the, uh, towards the outside. So I'm going to go ahead, select bulge, and put it inside the cylinder as a child. And in its parameters, there is a button that says fit to parent. So when you press the fit to parent, that bulge is going to fit snugly into that object. If I start doing the strength, notice that I get that curvature that I'm actually looking for. So that's good. It looks like a barrel. It might not look like my coffee mug yet, but it starts to look something similar to that curvature. I can use the fillet if I want to. So it looks a little... Notice how the curve of that fillet of the deformer looks like. So just check it if it's going to help you or not. It seems like it's not going to help me, so I'm just going to turn it off. Okay. Now I need to taper or make the bottom a little smaller than the top. Okay, so for that, I'm going to go ahead and, and select another one. This one that is called the taper shows me that it actually makes one side or one, uh, yeah, one part of the object uh, smaller and the other one larger. So I'm going to go ahead and select taper and put it inside the cylinder. And the same thing, click on fit to parent. And let's try how this one is working. So by doing this, now I am achieving that tapering. The bulge might be a little too much, so I'm going to reduce that. And I increase the tapering a little bit more, something like that. There you go. So now I have a nice model to begin with. So right there, the model is not finished because we need to add some thickness to it. Okay. So, so far, so good. Now we need to make this in polygonal because right now this is not polygonal even though uh, the tutorial said that I was going to be doing this cup in a polygonal mode, the initial part of this is basically using a parametric model, applying some deformers or, you know, trying to get it to the shape that I want to use as polygonal. And then when you have something that you like, then click on the object and go into the objects menu inside the objects manager. 
and select this option called current state to object. What this uh, option does is that it takes the cylinder and its deformations, and then it creates a polygonal object. It makes an editable object, but with the deformations. So go ahead and select that, and you'll notice that you created a second cylinder. Okay, And of course, the original gets uh, untouched, so we can actually disable everything by double-clicking with the option key press on those buttons. So those two buttons are there, the cylinder is not viewable. So once we have that, we need to close this hole that we have in here. To do that, then we're going to have to create, let's say, we're going to be doing some uh, edge selection. So selecting that, I'm going to go ahead and select these edges around. So I could go ahead and select every single edge by hand like, like this, or I could go ahead and press the letter U and then use what is called the loop selection. So if you notice, there is an L in there for loop selection. So I'm going to press the L key. And now with the L key, I can select this edge on the outside. Okay. Perfect. So by doing that, I selected the outer edge in here, and I'm going to go ahead and select the actual uh, scale tool. The scale tool is going, if I, if I move it right now, if I click out, out here and I move it, I'm going to scale that edge, but I don't want to do that. I want to create a copy of that edge, basically extruding that edge. So to do that in a very easy and simple way here in Cinema 4D is by pressing the control key and then click outside somewhere in here. Click and drag. When you do that, then basically you are creating a copy of that edge and at the same time you are creating additional polygons. So I can see that I'm going to need to move that down a little bit, something like that. All right. So I create a little curve in there and I'm going to go back to my scale tool and I press the control key again and I click outside here to create another copy of that. So once I create that copy, I'm going to move it down just a tiny bit to continue with that little curve. But now I'm going to uh, go ahead and fill this part with a polygon. So I'm just going to do the most basic way of doing that is by going into my selection tool here. Make sure I don't have anything selected. And I'm going to go into the menu called Mesh, Create Tools, and then go into the Close Polygon Hole. So by selecting that option, I can go ahead and when I get close to that edge that is basically a hole, it highlights. And if it highlights, then I click and then I created a polygon. So notice that that polygon has some lines in there, some kind of like bluish teal color type of lines. That is telling me that it is an end gone. And I always recommend not to have end guns in your models because they might bring problems. Of course, in here, that is uh, kind of like a, a, a not very visible part of your coffee mug, but, uh, you know, we should probably shouldn't worry about that at this moment. But just for the sake of the tutorial and for your good habits of creating good uh, uh, objects, then we're going to go ahead and cut this a little bit so we can get a better topology in this area. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my knife tool. So in the if I press the letter M, and I see that in there, there is a knife tool that the letter K. So I press K, and I make sure that I'm looking at polygons in my component tool here. So I'm going to go and basically cut from here to here, creating a couple of uh, polygons there from here to here. Perfect. So I made two cuts from here to here. Great. And now from, uh, let's see, from what area to what area. So now I created several of those polygons and I'm going to 
come here, from here to there, and from here to there. And I still have some leftovers in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and click these guys over here. Okay. So not quite the, the topology that I like, but then I can go ahead and uh, cut from here to there, from here to there, and then from here to here, from here to here. And now I am going to get rid of these uh, edges, so I can go ahead to the edges, and if I select one of these edges, I'm going to apply the command of dissolve. So right click, and then look for the dissolve command. So by doing that, I got rid of those edges. Same here, right click, dissolve. So select the edge, right click, dissolve. Select the edge, right click, dissolve. And by doing that, now every single one of them is a square. But of course, the topology is moving a little weird, so what I need to do is take my points tool, and I'm going to take some of these points and move them in a more uh, centralized way. So by to do that in the surface, I'm going to slice those uh, points very nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and use my mesh uh, menu again. I'm going to go to transform, I think that's what it is, yes. And there is something called slide. So if I click on slide, that means I can slide that point in the surface, the same as these guys over here. So I can reformat that topology to, to look a little better than what it is right now. So basically I'm trying to create kind of like a circular shape in here. So it looks something like that. So if you look at every single polygon that I have in there, it has four sides. So I successfully achieved uh, in getting those four polygons that I recommend all the time. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and continue modeling our, our cup. So we have uh, the topology correct. We have everything nice and the shape is perfectly fine with me, okay? Now the only thing is add thickness. To do that, I'm gonna go to the, to the polygons uh, tool here and make sure that if I select one of the polygons, I press Command A or uh, Select All. The Select All command is over here under the Select menu. So Select All. And I'm going to do an extrusion so when I go ahead and press the letter M, I can see that extrude is the letter T. It's almost close to the bottom, the letter T. So I press the letter T and I click and drag in an empty space here, click and drag, and make sure that I have selected that and that everything is extruding nice, very nice. Okay, perfect. Now the Thing that we have in here is that we have created an extrusion but we haven't created a thickness so to create a thickness we have to enable create caps notice that when i create caps the interior of my cup now from blue is going to turn in a different color that means now it is real thick <laughs> okay, because we were looking at the back of these uh, yellow polygons. Now it is thick, and I can go ahead and click away, and now I have my polygonal cup in here. Okay, so I'm going to save this, and then we're going to go to the next tutorial. So I hope to see you there. Bye-bye.